Warning. This part contains sexual content. Read, listen, or watch at your own risk. Keith's world was made up entirely of sensations. Lips on his neck, a warm fur body pressed against his back, hands on his hips, inching beneath his shirt, long slender fingers sliding up his stomach, his chest, teeth nipping at his shoulder, warm breath brushing past his ear, hips pressed against his. He fumbled with his room key and able to get a grip on the cool metal. It was so simple, a task, but he couldn't get his hands to cooperate, couldn't get his mind to focus, but he knew it had nothing to do with the beer. It took him several tries to get the key into the hole, and Lance chuckled, the deep sound rumbling through their chest, briefly puffs against his ear. He shoved the door open in a grunt of noise, tossing the key into his room as he stepped in. He grabbed Lance's wrist, tucking him inside. He shut the door with the more force than necessary. Earning another breathy laugh from Lance, Keith shoved against the door, pushing up Gamson and latching it onto his neck. His laugh cut off with a gasp, devolving to a low moan. The sound sent a fire blazing through his body. His hands found their way under Lance's shirt, tugging at the fabric and growling against Lance's throat in frustration. And Lance took the hint. His shirt was off faster than Keith could process. His mind muddled in a half speed. Inhibitions tossed aside and driven by desire. Suddenly he was faced with bare, bronze skin, smooth and flawless, and tight over lean muscles that shifted and moved beneath Keith's wandering hands. He didn't get to explore and admire nearly as much as he wanted to. The fabric of his own shirt suddenly obscuring his vision as Lance tugged his shirt over his head. He tossed it aside and then Lance kissing him. He melted into it, body pushing up against Lance's, rev reveling in the warmth of their contact, feeling Lance's body tight to the door. His lips were soft yet rough, smooth yet chapped. So many contradicting sensations that changed with each time their lips came together. No kiss was the same as the last. Each time they came together, it was something new, something thrilling, something for him to lose himself in. Couldn't think of anything better to lose himself in than Lance. Hands were on his hair, slender fingers tangling and tugging at his roots, long drawn out groan ripping from his throat, and Lance took the opportunity to lick his way into his mouth. Keith opened up to him easily. His hands were on Lance's hips, running up and down his sides, exploring his chest, his back, unable to stay still. It was messy. It was uncoordinated. Their teeth clanked and caught on lips. Their tongues bumped and fought. He could feel drool running down his chin. And it was the worst kiss of his entire life. And yet somehow, it was the best. It wasn't long before Lance was pulling away. Their eyes locked, both breathing heavily, pops fanning out across each other's lips. Then Lance's face switched, and it was laughing. His head fell back with a dull funk against the door. One hand going to cover his eyes to laugh. He felt himself smile in response, a missing running deep and bubbling up out of him, making him feel light despite the heaviness of his desire. He dropped his head to Lance's shoulder, his own shaking with silent laughter. When they had both calmed down, Keith lifted his head. They both wiped off their mouths, grinning as they did. So, Lance's gaze turns up as his hands cradle Keith's face, fingers tingling in his hair. Wanna try that again? He mumbled, voice deep and breathless. It sent shivers down his spine. He gave a barely perceivable nod and breathing. Yeah. With a gentle thug, Lance pulled him close again, tilting his head to slot their lips together. Unlike the first time, it was slow, gentle, yet in an edge of barely concealed fashion. They took their time, exploring each other's mouths, figuring out how their lips fit together, reveling in the feeling of it, eventually picking up a subtle ebb and flow, a give and take, a gentle rocking rhythm that built and built and built. Keith's knees slipped between Lance's thighs, pushing up against him. He could feel Lance's dick pressed tight against his jeans. Keith was achingly hard. Lance's hands curled in his hair, and Keith groaned. He nipped at Lance's lips, at his jaw, at his neck, his hands dragging hard against the bronze flesh of his chest and back. Unable to stay still and loving the feel of the muscles squirming beneath his touch, Lance made little gasping sounds and small breathy moans. Keith loved them. Lance tilted his head back, an invitation that Keith gladly took. He latched onto Lance's neck, dragging his teeth, sucking his lips, sucking hard, exploring everything, eager to hear more of those sounds. Their hips rocked together, 
chasing the friction that they needed. Everything was becoming far more urgent far too quickly. Hands were between them, fingers fumbling the button of his jeans. Keith sucked Mart into his collarbone, and his own hands struggling with Nan's pants. They had to detach from each other to kick off their shoes, Keith growling his frustration as his laces took longer than he wanted them to. As soon as his feet were bare on the floor, Lance was tugging his pants down, fall quickly by his own, and his lips were together again, hands everywhere, grooming, feeling, lips losing coordination or urgency. Keith's legs is the bed, and he fell backwards, dragging Lance down on top of him. They scooted further onto the bed, Keith spreading his legs for Lance to better lay between them. He wrapped them uncomfortably around Lance's hips, arms fitting automatically around his neck. Lance lathered with his neck with attention, nipping playfully before playing the kisses, sucking on his collarbone. He pushed his lips into Keith's, the thin material of their boxers leaped nothing into the imagination. Keith's back arch, head pushing into the mattress, the moan was ripped from him. Lance lifted his head, smiling down at him in that cocky way that was both infuriating and endearing. He braced himself with an elbow next to Keith's head, his other hand running almost lazily up and down Keith's thigh, from hip to knee and back again. And then he lifted his head, eyes flickering around as he took in their surroundings. Nice room, he said casually, laughter at the edges. Keith rolled his eyes, wrapping his arms tight around his neck and pulling him back down. Shut up. He mumbled against his lips, and then they were kissing again, bodies rocking in the air, delicious friction teasing and tantalizing, but not really enough. It ended too quickly when Lance was suddenly pulling away, bodies coming to a still as he gazed down. They were both panting, and Keith took sauce in the fact that he looked as wrecked as he felt. Okay, so, Lance started having to pause to catch his breath and lick his lips. He leaned onto one elbow, running his other hand through his hair. Not to like, stop the flow or whatever, but which way do you wanna? You know, he gestured vaguely up and down their bodies. Do this. He stared at him, why not a race? Lance fighted. You know, which way do you usually do it. How do you like it? He didn't know what Lance meant. His mind was only working at half capacity. Lance sighed, looking embarrassed but his tone betrayed him with something that almost sounded fun. Do you want to give or take Keith? Oh. Oh. Keith to his head. Keith snapped the lance as he chewed his final lip, fingers playing the hair at the nape of his neck. Usually I don't mind but with the rays. Lance ducked his head a little, chuckling. He grinned, reaching up to brush a stray strand of hair away from his forehead. No, that's chill. I get it. You don't want to ride a bike for hours a couple of days after riding my dick for... Keith Chubbin and Lance laughed, voice lowering as he waggled his elbows. Lucky for you, I'm pretty flexible in bed. And to top it off, he winked. I didn't to fight the heat rising to his cheeks, and the heat rushing into his dick. Heat retaliated by forcing them to roll over, and caught up Lance's lap with a solid kiss. When he had left him breathless and scrum, Lance pushed him away with gentle hands on his shoulders. You got any this time? He knew exactly what he meant. He stared at the him, eyes wide as he blinked. He hadn't been expected. This would happen when he packed. He hadn't fought to bring Lou and condoms on vacation. Lance must have seen his low-key pack, or perhaps he was just prepared for this answer because he was shoving Keith a little more insistently. Nope, nope, it's okay. I've got this. Up. What? Up. Up above. He slapped at Keith's arms until he rolled off them. Then he leapt to his feet, only stumbling a little as he stepped across the room as Keith watched, baffled as Lance hurriedly struggled into his jeans, nearly falling over before leaning against the wall for support. He wiggled into them, buttoned them, and then tugged on his shirt. I'll be right back. He had only one shoe on as he made his way to the door, the other in his hand. Keith blinked, pushing himself into a sitting position. Are you serious? You bet that sweet ass I'm serious, he said, leaning against the door as he pulled 
his eyes shone. When he stumped his foot down, he pointed at Keith with a dramatic, almost threatening form. You got me excited for that dick of yours, and by God, I'm going to write it. Keith groaned, covering his face with his hands, but not before seeing Lance's lips curl into a white grin. He flopped back on the bed. Why are you like this? Don't lie. Want a piece of this ass? Keith groaned again. It's part of my charm. Now you stay here, stay hot, stay hydrated. I'll be right back. For Keith could look up. Lance was already out the door, and then he was left alone in silence. A ghost of Lance's warmth was still in the room, against the skin. The only evidence that he had ever been there was the marks of blooming on Keith's collarbone and the tingling of his lips. But even those sensations were fading. The memory of his weight, his warmth, was quickly fading as his skin cooled. It was left feeling cold and vulnerable, and it was extremely sobering. He still felt tipsy, the alcohol still buzzing in his veins, but with his exposed bare skin, the silence came a strange clarity of mind. And with that clarity came low key panic. This wasn't this wasn't something he did very often. Hooking up, one night stands, vacation flings. This wasn't something he was planning on. He hadn't meant to find someone to hook up with. And despite his attraction to Lance, he hadn't really fought to get this far. But this was real. This was happening. It was happening, wasn't it? Lance wouldn't just ditch him, would he? He would come back. Lance didn't seem like the type of guy to just leave him hanging. Still, when he did come back, would things be different? With their initial buzz and desire calmed, would it really still happen? More importantly, did he want it to happen? Did he want to hook up with Lance like this? Randomly and through confidence, Halfway across the world from home? What did he want? His head was going to start hurting if he kept this up. He didn't want to overthink things, but unfortunately, that was what happened when he was left alone in silence. He forced himself to get up. He grabbed a bottle of water, the coolness of it relieving his senses, bringing some calm to his mind. Unable to just sit around in his boxers, he pulled on his pajama pants, feeling instantly better. With that sense of vulnerability gone, then he sat down on his bed. He turned on the TV and flicked through the channels while he waited. He found Lance's hurried out but enthusiastic exit of the promise that he had left him with, and found himself smiling. This was unlike any hookup he ever had. It felt like nearly an hour before he heard a knock at the door, and despite practically straining to hear it, waiting and waiting for it, Keith still jumped. He slid out the bed, paddling across the room in the door. Heart pounding in his chest. It was ridiculous. Why was he getting so worked up? It was just Lance. Lance who said he'd be back. Lance who was starting to doubt wouldn't be back. Lance who managed to do so much to him without doing anything at all. When he opened the door, Lance was standing there, a small plastic bag in one hand and a pizza box in the other. Did someone order some lube, a pizza, and a Cuban? He practically purred. Raggling his eyebrows suggestively, Keith took a moment to look him over. The bright smile, the disheveled hair, the shirt lifted on the one side to reveal a sharp hip bone. One shoe untied, breathing like he had run the entire way back, eyes bright and beautiful. Did he really want to do this? Yes, yes he did, very much. So that it was starting to hurt, breath taking his lungs and heart clenching painfully. No, he said calmly, decided to shut the door. Keith! Lance squealed in a half whisper and half whine. His foot shot out, kicking the door back open. Keith merely chuckled, opened the door wider to let him in. Lance slid past him, a level of sway on his hips that he had to be intentional. He set the pizza box on the hotel table, tossed the bag onto the bed, and turned to find Keith, standing right by him. His hands found their way to Keith's bare chest as Keith's arms automatically wound around his waist, tugging them close. I wasn't sure you would come back. He found himself mumbling. Rand's resulting smile was small and soft, without any edge of mockery. His hands slid up his chest, loosely draping around his neck, fingers playing with his hair. He tilted his head to the side. I said I would, didn't I? Yeah. He leaned forward to press a kiss to his lips. He had meant for it to be quick, casual. But Lance held him captive, 
deepening the kiss until the heat felt a stare of heat inside him once again. Sorry it took so long, Lance mumbled against lips. The first place I went didn't have what I wanted. Keep pulled away, leaning back a fraction to eye the pizza box on the table. And apparently you got pizza? Lance nodded, grinning with pride. I got pizza, he raised an eyebrow. Gates returned to his. Why? Lance shrugged, grin shifting to something more sheepers. While I was out, I realized I was starving. And that's it. Been a while since we ate. And I always get hungry when I drink. You know, so I thought maybe you were too. I don't know about you, but I plan on working quite in an appetite tonight. So, you know, gotta refill our carbs. And then I thought, pizza. And well, here we are. He was unaware that he was making a face. But he must have been, because Lane's smile fell, replaced by a look of worry. His brows pinched. He bit of his bottom lip as his eyes searched for Keats. Keats didn't like that look of crestfallen uncertainty. It didn't suit him at all. Bad decision? Keats' stomach took that moment to growl loudly, and he felt his lips quirk into a small smile. Good decision. Lance smiles back. Awesome. Keith eyed the pizza box warmly. It's just... I'm lactose intolerant? It was a sweet thought. One that was so completely random, but so very Lance. Couldn't really blame Lance for not remembering that he was lactose intolerant. He mo only mentioned it in passing, and they hadn't known each other for very long. I remembered. He did? Keith blinked to him. And the surprise must have been clear on his face, because Lance screamed right in. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that. And at first I was like, what are we going to do? Because pizza sounded so good, but I really don't want you out of commission after I went through the trouble I to go out and find Lou. So I just ordered it without cheese. Keep blinking several times, trying to lighten Lance quick and pace them back in. You... Ordered it without cheese? Lance somehow managed to look sheepish and proud at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it's still pizza. A little weird without cheese, but at least you can eat it, no problem. Was that a weird idea? Probably, he shrugged. I'm still a little tipsy, so it sounded like a good idea at the time. I'm sure what to say. He leaned over and flipped open the pizza box. Sure enough, there was a pizza. Cut into eight slices, covered in sauce and a plethora of meats with absolutely no cheese. I got a meat lovers, Lance said, bringing Keith's attention back to him. His lips curled mischievously, eyebrows wagging. Because, you know, meat lovers, he ground his hips to Keith's painfully with large, overly dramatic motions. Keith couldn't help it. He laughed. All the worries and doubts that had started to build to accumulate in Lance's absence melted away. Evaporate and bubbling out of it in a surprisingly boisterous laugh. He dropped his head to Lance's shoulder, his own shoulder shaking and his arms curling together around Lance's waist. Lance was a complete and utter dork. An idiot. A cocky, inseparable, incredibly endearing idiot. And Keith undeniably wanted him. This was really unlike any other hookup he ever had. Lance was unlike any other person he ever hooked up with. They lounged in the bed while eating, flipping through the channels, mentally channels, until they searched on Family Feud. He never watched the show, never wanted to, and it would no doubt be boring to watch on his own. But Lance made it fun. Lance was making a lot of things fun. After they had finished eating, it didn't take long to Lance to start to get restless, just sitting around waiting to digest, so he started wandering around the small hotel room. You realize it looks like you're a drug dealer, right? He said, shuffling through a plethora of Ziploc bags that littered one of the shelves, each filled with white powder or some round pills. He shrugged, a small spot taking his loose. That's why I tell Shiro all the time. What is it even for? He asked, glanced over his shoulder with a raised brow. It's all the nutrients that I'll need for the day of the race. All the electrolytes and salt and crap. I can't really eat much while you're out there, so you gotta make sure your body gets what it needs to keep going. You don't eat? Well, I usually eat like half a peanut butter sandwich on the bike. Lance was a long low. Damn, 
Slow down, you gluttonous pig. Kids are... Oh, gross. I know these. Lance said, picking up one of the many goo packets he had lying around. He waved it around the air. I've taken these for, like, swim meets and stuff. Yeah, I pretty much live off of them, Grace did. Lance eyed the pile wearily. All of these? One every half an hour, give or take. Oh, sweet Jesus. He cringed, tossing the packet down. I don't know how you do it. That's absolutely disgusting. He shrugged. It's not so bad. They have a texture worse than cum. The corners of Keith's lips quirked, despite his efforts to keep a straight face. I don't mind. Lance gave him a look then, a curious, intrigued one that made something stare in Keith's gut, reminding him why they were there to begin with. Good to know, Lance said, lips curling to slight grin. I'll keep that in mind. He continued poking around Keith's things, and Keith watched him from where he was propped up against the headboard. Legs stretched out in front of him. One hand behind his head and the other was resting on his stomach. You have so many things, Lance commented, ruffling through Mr. Powell on the table. It's a bunch of random stuff. I don't think I need all of it, but Shira and Laura insist. They've been doing this a lot longer than me. Lance picked up the package. Nepal guards? He asked. I keep with a small smile. Really? He snorted his music. Those are necessary. Dude. Why? Shirts chafe, especially when you run a marathon. You're doing an Ironman, which ends with a 26.2 miles, or exactly how long a marathon is. Lance eyebrows went up at that. He looked impressed. Keith Merck. Damn. His eyes raked over Keith's body, not burning to hide that slow examination. Keith did his best not to fidget under the weight of that gaze, trying not to move his hands to cover his bare torso. When Lance's eyes returned to his, they were happily and giving him a dark look that sent heat spiraling through him. Key licked his lips, pleased to know how Lance's eyes flickered down to a moment. Like what you see? He asked, voice a lot lower and rougher than he had intended. He was ridiculous saying it, and had meant for it to sound teasing, but it came out as so much more. Lance visibly shivered, setting down the package in his hand and stepping closer to the bed. I do, actually. He put a knee on the bed, leaning forward until it was being held up by his hands. I like it a lot. He crawled forward, moving slow and body languid. Keep rose, breath catching his throat as the heel pulled and coiled on his gut. Jesus Christ. Lance was pinning him with that gaze. Blue depths dark with hunger as he crawled onto Keith's lap, straddling him, as firmly the planet on his thighs, he leaned forward, pausing when their faces were close enough that Keith's vision started to blur and he could feel his breath on his lips, but not quite touch him. And as cute as these are, he said, second at the hem of Keith's alien head pajama pants. I think they look better on the floor. You're the one to talk, Keith muttered, hands coming down to rest on Lance's thighs, rubbing them up and down in the line in the way he squirmed on his lap. You're fully dressed. I bet I can get naked faster than you. He leaned up to get a full view of his face. Brow race. You're turning this into a race? Something playful sparked in Lance's eyes. To reckon turning my shoes. Yup, you're fully clothed and I'm just wearing pajama pants. What's the matter? Scared, iron boy? In your dreams, what does the winner get? There was definitely something sly about his expression. He liked it a lot more than he wanted to admit, if his boner had anything to say about it. Loser has to figure me open. <laughs> Both eyebrows went up at that. Would I want to win then? He smirked, pointed. Because if you win, get to watch me touch myself. <laughs> and yup, <laughs> he was definitely pitching a tent now. Hello, Boner City. And the mental image was... He was pretty sure his face would flush if every once of blood in his body wasn't rushing straight to his dick. Lance, let's spread wide, one hand on his dick, pulling desperately with his fingers for a deep in his ass, if squirming as he tried to get a wrangle. Beautiful skin flushing glistening, head thrown back, gasping, moaning, eyes slogging to Keith's, blue irises flashing in smug, knowing he was driving Keith. One, two, three, go! 
named Shadow and Rush, practically throwing himself off key as he rolled off the bed, hands automatically scrambling at the front of his pants. He had never seen a man shimmy out of the jeans so quickly. Hands key gap, entirely distracted and losing precious seconds before he was able to recover. He jammed his hand into the hem of his pants and boxers, sliding them both down the rush. By the time he kicked them off, Lance was already standing next to the bed, hands on his hips and grinning his victory, fully naked in all his glory. Keith's eyes devoured him. Looks like I win, he snagged, swaying his hips in such an overdone manner that it really shouldn't have been attractive. But Keith's mouth went dry. Now you have to touch me, he continues to say, tossing the small plastic bag onto the bed next to him. Keith couldn't help this part. Somehow, I don't really feel like I lost. Lance started crawling across the bed, reclaiming his spot in Keith's lap. He put his hands on either side of Keith's face, holding him with surprising gentleness as he pulled him forward. Then get to it, loser, he said, breathe against Keith's lips. Keith closed the remaining distance of kiss. His buzz had long since worn off, leaving only the echo of drunkenness that he had felt before. His newfound sobriety brought with it with a crystal clarity. Clarity with which he was able to fully enjoy kissing lands. Could fully appreciate the softness of his lips and the way they fit together. The eagerness with he kissed them back. Lance's hand slid up his bare torso with agonizing slowness. Fingers spreading and taking in every detail on their way up. Before those fingers curled to his hair once again, they did so. Keith's own hands slid down his back, taking every bump of his spine. Every rib, every dip and stretch of muscle, the slight curve of his waist, the curve of his ass, before running out along his thighs. Lance squirmed on his lap, dick hard and rest next to Keats on the cancer stomach as he arched into it. Their kiss started out slow, almost hesitant in nature, a question, moving to something more purposeful and languid in exploration, then shifting to something more desperate, more passionate, hungry. They explored each other with hands, tongues, and teeth, licking to Lance's mouth like a man dying of thirst. Lance pulled back gasping for air, but Keith wasn't done. He needed more. More. Kissed along his jaw, down his neck, dragging his teeth and dragging out moans. The urgency became plain with small moments. The extra squeeze in their fingers that they explored, the rustlessness of their hands, the extra bite to their kisses, the loss of coordination. The itch in their breaths, the small noises that they couldn't quite keep from slipping out, the rocking of their bodies trying to press together and chase the friction between them. Keith fumbled for the bag, trying to get the plastic off the bottle. He had to turn away to see what he was doing, and then took advantage of that to get his revenge on Keith's neck. Keith slid his head to the side, giving him better access as he warmed the liquid between his fingers. Lance gasped as he pressed against him, shuddered as he Swirled his finger around and laying out a shaky moan as he slowly pushed the tip of his one finger aside. He took his time working lands open, took pleasure in seeing what sounds he could draw out of him, and enjoyed exploring him and watching his reactions. Lance didn't disappoint. He squirted onto Keith's lap, hands alternating between digging into Keith's hair, dragging down to his chest, and digging into his arms. He tried to kiss Keith back, but it soon became too much and tossed his head back. Breathing heavily, gasping, and biting his lip to dry, to stifle oh, with the other sounds he made. Keith alternated between watching it and sucking Mars into his neck. His free hand rubbed up and down Lance's thigh in a mindless, soothing gesture, reveling in the softness of his skin. By the time Lance was begging for him, he was achingly hard and all too willing to oblige. He rolled them over, propping Lance's hips up on the pillow before sailing between his thighs, which spreads easily for him in an obvious welcome and invitation. Lance watched him through half lit eyes as he rolled calm and on, arms thrown back and hands gripping the pillow above his head. Hair disheveled and skin flushed and bruised, he panted, chest rising and falling in exaggerated breaths, tongue, tongue darting out to lick across moist, kiss rolling lips. He was beautiful. Keep pushed into him slowly, one hand on Lance's hip and the other at his side, holding him up. His eyes wanted to flutter close as the sensation of his tight warmth, but he forced him to stay open. Eagerly devouring the expression on Lance's face, watching as his back arched, head thrown back, face twisting in pleasure, pain and surprise. Keith paused, suiting him, hand roaming, petting, as he muttered praises and 
encouragement, only when he relaxed did he continue, pushing all the way in and gasping. His head dropped to Lance's chest and both of them breathed heavily as they adjusted. Lance was tight and warm around him, driving him insane with pure sensation. Lance recovered before he did, whining pitifully as he squirmed, wordlessly pleading for Keith to move, and so he did. Because who was he to deny Lance Henley? He started out slow, dragging out and pushing in with steady movements, building pressure and giving out friction to feel good, but not enough to be satisfied. He kept at that pace until Lance was whining again, pleading, hands grabbing, nails digging, begging. Keith gave in, spinning up until he lost all sense of reason. Focused solely on the sensation of Lance, Lance around him, Lance legs wrapping around his hips, Lance nails dragging down on his back, Lance voice in his ear, cracked and ragged, breathless and desperate as he guessed his name and begged faster, harder, more, please, Keith, 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 he was lost in sensation, chasing pleasure, chasing friction, chasing something he couldn't name but could feel building inside of him, the warmth in his stomach, the lightness in his chest, and a clench in his gut, coiling low, building, building, building. His thoughts spiraling away from him until there were a steady steam of Lance, 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 Lance. He shifted his weight, changing the ankle, and thrust his heart until Lance back arch, his entire body shredding as he let out a choked cry. There. There, he kept the angle, thrusting hard and fast, feeling his own orgasm close. He grabbed at Lance's dick, pumping him quickly and mindlessly. He lost his rhythm, moments becoming sporadic. It didn't matter. He came with a choked sound, hearing Lance cry out, nails digging in hard as he spilled out over Keith's hand. They wrote out their orgasm together, pausing when they were done and hovering still. Chest heaving, he pulled out slowly. Both of them went and did so. He tugged off the condom with a cringe, tossed it in the trash, and he made his way to the bathroom, on shaking his head to get a towel. When he turned, he had to make a moment to simply look at him. Still lying on the bed, limbs sprawled, eyes closed, blush chest heaving, wet lips parted, hair a mess, cum drying on the stomach. It was perfect picture of post-orgasmic bliss, and then something fluttered and twisted on Keith's chest at the sight. He licked he liked that sight. He liked it a lot. He cleaned Lance up before collapsing him on the bed next to him, half on top of him, and arm thrown across his waist. Lance chuckled, eyes slitting open, and, up, and rolling his head to the side to gaze lazily at Keith. His smile was slow and small and content, and Keith felt his lips tucking up into an answering one. Do I have to say how incredible that was? Lance said. Was still ragged and sounded a little winded. Keith chipped it, recognition against Lanchard. Couldn't help the smirk that curled his lips as he gave a half hearted shrug. It will be appreciated. Lance shifted, rolling onto his side to face him. Arms lying across Keith's hip, fingers illy tracing patterns against his skin. He leaned forward so their noses were touching, whispering. That was incredible. Keith hummed, eyes closing as his arm curled just a little tighter around Lance's waist. I agree. Then there was a finger poking his cheek. Keith's eyes opened, finding Lance smirking at him. Amuse me, dance in his eyes. Uh, you tired already? You're supposed to be the one in shape. Shut up! Beer makes me tired, he mumbled, scooping forth to bury his face in the cruel of Lance's neck. He chuckled, and Keith felt the sound of vibrate rim, right down his toes. Lance's hand stood up down shoulders. Such a shame. And after just one round, Keith's dick twitched with interest. He lifted his head, peering through his hair and raised his throat. This was only round one? Lance's cheek again was infectious. Well, you are a trap queen. I was thinking we could go for three. He tried to be nonchalant. That is, unless you're too tired. Keith snorted, but he couldn't help the amused smile that betrayed him. Is that a challenge? And if, and if it is, then I accept. Lance's eyes sparkled with mirth and something warm. He scooted back and stepped in Keith's arms to him. Alright, let me go to the bathroom and let's see what we can do about round two. 
It slid out of the bed and shuffled to the back with an unshaken legs with an uncertain wobble. That, however, didn't stop him from casting a smirk and a wink over his shoulder before closing the door behind him. Keith rolled onto his back, staring up at the ceiling, unable to suppress the smile on his face. Yeah, definitely unlike any other hookup he ever had. Oh boy. <laughs>